Welcome to The Greenway with Mac, a channel dedicated to active transportation. Today I'm taking you on a city and greenway ride in Austin, Texas. The route starts at the Texas State Capitol and goes down to Lady Bird Lake, then west to the Roberta Crenshaw Bridge, where we will cross and return towards downtown, ending at Terry Black's Barbecue. The route is just under five miles and is almost completely flat. There are not many places in Texas known for safe biking, but there are some bright spots in Austin and a ton of untapped potential as a bike destination. I originally planned to cycle on the Waller Creek Greenbelt Trail and spotlight the Red River Cultural District, but it was completely blocked with tents and people living on the path. It's uncommon for me to say anything negative about any of the places I visit, but I think it's important to inform others to be careful riding on that trail. Until the city cleans up the area, I would encourage you to avoid the Waller Creek Greenbelt. Cross the street and join the bike lane. This is Congress Avenue, which is one of the main roads in the city. This is the only part of the ride where we have to worry about cars, and Austin drivers only tried to kill me once today. Right here. If riding in the street is not your thing, then I suggest picking up the path once we get to the lake. To our left, six or seven blocks, is the Red River Cultural District, but there is not currently safe bike infrastructure to get over there. It's close enough to walk, and some of the landmarks are Stubbs Barbecue, the Creek and the Cave Comedy Club, and the Museum of the Weird. The theater on the left is the Paramount Theater. It was built in 1915 and has hosted events such as the 1966 Batman premiere. Like many theaters in the country, it has fought for its survival, including the Blade sign displaying its name. We will talk more about it in a little bit. To the left is the Waller Creek District, which has some of the higher-end hotels, such as the Four Seasons and the Fairmont. Use our sponsor, Macmillan Travel Design, to book your stay. This intersection is 3rd Street, which does have a protected bike lane. Take it left to the convention center, or take it right to the Shoal Creek Trail. We are two blocks from the Butler Bike Trail, so I decided to keep going straight and join that waterfront trail. Go straight across Cesar Chavez and use this bike-specific ramp to turn right to get on the path. These multi-use ramps are a beautiful and delightful way to get to the Ann and Roy Butler Hike and Bike Trail, where we will spend most of today's ride. We will be going to the right as we face the water, but if you went left, you would immediately be at the Congress Avenue Bridge, which is locally famous for the bats that live underneath it. The 1.5 million bats are Austin's most popular visitor attraction. Nightly between March and October, the bats fly from under the bridge 30 to 60 minutes before sunset to forage for food. Grab a spot on the bridge, next to the trail, or even on a boat to see the unique spectacle. One recommendation I have is to view the bats from the east side of the bridge, which is the opposite of the one we are on, because you will be looking west. In addition to the bat show, you will be treated with the backdrop of the setting Austin sun. We are on the Ann and Roy Butler Hike and Bike Trail, which is named after a former mayor of Austin and his wife. The full trail is 10 miles long and hugs both shorelines of Lady Bird Lake. There are some paved sections, but most of it was hard-packed dirt. One thing that makes this trail unique is that since it's largely unpaved, there are some pretty wide sections that help give everyone space. When it was paved, it was narrow, when you consider how busy the trail was. Overall, this is a wonderful all-ages off-street trail. You can turn right here to join the Shoal Creek Trail, which on the map appears to be three miles of off-street trail along a creek. 
It could have the same issue as Red River, so let me know in the comments if this is a viable, safe trail. On our right are a couple of things worth noting. There is a path that runs along the opposite side of the street, called the Lance Armstrong Bikeway. It is currently incomplete, but promises to be a few more miles of off-street trails. One way to safely reach the Lance Armstrong Bikeway from here is to take the James P. Pfluger Bicycle and Pedestrian Bridge. This bridge spans Cesar Chavez to the Armstrong Bikeway if you go north, and spans Ladybird Lake to the south. Lamar Boulevard is a busy road that spans the lake here, and its bridge was hostile to people outside of cars. There were no bike lanes and the sidewalks were small. A cyclist was killed by a drunk driver on the bridge in 1991, and the pressure for a safe bike and ped crossing grew. The car bridge was added to the list of historical places, so engineers were limited in what they could do with the existing bridge. The city council decided that a separate bridge for walkers and riders was the best solution. The bridge is named for James D. Pfluger, who was an architect from Austin who helped design the biking and hiking trails. These metal structures look like public art, but are restrooms as well. Just past them is a tunnel that leads to a sports complex and the Amtrak station. This is where the Texas Eagle Amtrak route runs, north to Chicago and west to Los Angeles. Its proximity to the trail would make it much easier to travel to Austin with your own bike. Safe Streets Austin is one of the local bike advocacy organizations in the area. One of their key goals is to get 50% of the population to use transit and active transportation methods by 2039. To do this, they are focusing on the All Ages and Abilities Bicycle Priority Network. Also referred to as the AAA Bicycle Priority Network, this is a vision of safe trails and protected bike lanes so that users of all ages can move through the city. Austin High School is on the right. I think it's awesome to have really good car-free routes to schools, and it's something I wish we had more of in North America. When students can safely get to and from school without a car, it helps them to develop independence and frees parents from being a taxi service. Most of today's ride is along Lady Bird Lake, which is part of the Colorado River. I know it may sound like I've failed geography class, but this is a separate Colorado River than the one that nourishes the western United States. Lady Bird Lake used to be called Town Lake and was named for the former First Lady. Lady Bird Johnson was one of the leaders who helped clean up Town Lake and advocated for a trail that completely encircled it. Her vision was for a trail that was wheelchair accessible decades prior to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Here is the Texas Rowing Center, where you can rent stand-up paddleboards, kayaks, and canoes. You can also pay for a lesson. They are open from 6 a.m. to dusk every day, and are proud to be both kid and dog friendly. This bridge is where we are crossing and heading back towards the city center. The bridge is named for Roberta Crenshaw, who was an Austin civic leader and philanthropist. She was a champion of parks and open spaces, and Austinites are lucky to have had someone like her. Her contributions include recruiting Lady Bird Johnson to support the lake project and raising funds for the Umlauf Sculpture Garden and Museum. She personally donated six acres of land to create Reed Park and 30 acres for what is now Roy G. Guerrero Park. She owned one half of the Paramount Theater, that one that we rode past on Congress, 
and in 1976, she donated her share so that it could be renovated and preserved. Lastly, it was Roberta Crenshaw who fought in the 90s for a pedestrian bridge right here, which was opened in 2004 and dedicated to her in 2005. What a legacy. If you continue straight and cross the street, you will arrive at the Austin Nature and Science Center. This family-friendly museum has 80 acres of exhibits, many of which are outdoors, and admission is free. Over to the right is Zilker Metropolitan Park, and it includes the Hartman Prehistoric Garden, Barton Springs Memorial Pool, and the Zilker Park Disc Golf Course. In total, there are 351 acres to be enjoyed. I think this is what is most impressive about Austin. You have a fantastic, interesting city, yet you have remarkably close access to outdoor recreation and it's thanks to visionaries like Andrew Jackson Zilker who donated this huge piece of land. In addition to the recreation at Zilker Park, this is where the music festival Austin City Limits takes place each fall. The other major musical festival here, South by Southwest, takes place all across the city each spring. Austin City Limits is a long weekend, while South by Southwest is a little longer than a week. These festivals, and the high quality of nightly live music make Austin one of the top music cities in the U.S. They add to a legacy that was built by legends such as Willie Nelson, Janis Joplin, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Further ahead on this trail is a statue of Stevie Ray Vaughan, and across the river is one for Willie Nelson. Joplin and Nelson also have a mural depicting both on the east side of downtown. I have info for all three of these in the description. Luneff Point offers views across the lake and back at the Austin skyline and is a great place to document your trip with a picture. Up ahead is the Barton Creek Pedestrian Bridge, and we will take it so that we don't have to venture too far from Lady Bird Lake. We are turning left, but if you turn right, you would arrive at the Umlauf Sculpture Garden in a quarter of a mile. An organization that has been a champion of active transportation is Austin Outside. Their mission is to put everyone in Austin within 10 minutes of a park, green space, or natural area. They helped organize Prop B on the 2020 ballot that passed with two-thirds of voters and approved almost a half a billion dollars for active transportation projects. As a visitor, what I am most excited about is that over half of this is allocated to urban trails, bikeways, improved sidewalks, and Vision Zero investments. The funding is expected to be 70% of the on-street AAA bicycle network. Locals should be excited about the money allocated to their Safe Routes to Schools program, which will make it safer and more enjoyable to commute to school on foot or on wheels. Up ahead, we will turn right and cut through Butler Park. If you are looking for a longer ride, 
you still have three and a half more miles of off-street riding on the Butler Path to enjoy along the lake, including a mile and a half long boardwalk that was completed in 2014. In addition, the Butler Path connects with Roy Guerrero Trail and several others, so you have lots of options for longer, stress-free rides. But it's lunchtime for us, so we are going to turn right here to cut through Butler Metro Park and reach Terry Black's. There are lots of little trails, but generally head south toward the main road, which is Barton Springs Road. Butler Park includes the Alliance Children's Garden, Doherty Art Center, Doug Som Hill, Butler Pitch and Putt, and the land that the Long Center and the Palmer Events Center sit on. Near the water is where you'll find that Stevie Ray Vaughan statue that I mentioned earlier. Cross at this intersection, go left in this bike lane, and Terry Black's is on the right. If this video was helpful to you, let me know by hitting the like button. And subscribe if you don't want to miss the next great ride. I'll see you on the next Greenway.